it is important for us to know exactly where these scholars were coming from and why they differed. One may ask, why then only four? Well, actually, if you remember a while ago, I mentioned the students of Medina, al fuqaha al Sab'a, Nafir, Salim, all of these great jurors of Medina, great jurors of Mecca, of Kufa, of Basra. But the problem is that there were great scholars other than these four Imams, maybe even greater than them, in knowledge and else uh, uh, and other things. For example, Malik ibn Anas was the Imam of Medina, but everyone knows that Al Layth ibn Sa'd was the judge of Egypt, and the contemporaries say that he was more knowledgeable than Malik. We know that there was Sufyan ibn Uyayna, there was Sufyan al Thawri, there was Abdullah. Ibn Mubarak, there was Al-Awza'i in Lebanon, there was uh, uh, Ibrahim al nakhri Great, great scholars, heavy duty, but they did not have schools of thought. So why were those or these four great Imams having such large followers while these other greater Imams were unfortunate not to have Scholars say that this was due to the number of students. See, when you have a great number of students to carry your knowledge and spread it worldwide, then you have a name, a reputation, and a school that is followed. But if you're a great scholar, one of the greatest, yet you were not blessed with students who take care of your knowledge and embrace it as their own and work hard to spread it worldwide, your knowledge will die after a few years. So if you look at these four, four schools of thought, let it be known that they were not the only scholars of their times they were far greater scholars than them but Allah Azza wa Jal gave their work prominence and made it spread all over the world for a wisdom he only Allah Azza wa knows about also it is worth noting that these four Imams were not a one-man show. Rather, if you look at their biography, you will find that, for example, Imam Abu Hanifa had a great number of scholars to learn from. And he did not assume the position of teaching until he was like 40 years of age when his sheikh, his scholar, teacher died and he assumed his place. Also, if you look at Imam Malik, among his teachers were the descendants of companions. So the sons of the companions and their sons, he had 900 of them. No wonder he did not have to leave Medina to seek knowledge like all other scholars. Yet he was permitted to give fatwa as a, at a very early age. Imam Shafi'i likewise, he was 15 when he started giving fatwa and teaching. He was 15. Others at this age, maybe even older, are preoccupied by PUBG or playing Fortnite. Not Imam Shafi'i. Imam Shafi'i stayed in Mecca learning Arabic, Quran, and Hadith, and Fiqh, and then went to Medina, where he became the student of Imam Malik, and learned Imam Malik's Fiqh and knowledge from him. And he said that no one has 
any right over me more than Imam Malik, as he is my teacher and I benefited a lot from him. If you look at Imam Ahmed ibn Hanbal, a man who traveled all over the world to listen to the hadith, to compile the hadith, he went from Baghdad to uh, the areas near Persia and, and, and Khurasan, what's after the river they call it. He went to Al Yemen, he went to Mecca, he went to Medina. He traveled like crazy. But look what was the result being Imam Ahlus Sunnati wal Jama'a. So they've learned from those who came before them. And they would not give something that is out of the blue except after implementing this knowledge that they had uh, received from those who were before them.